Um, David, just to pick up on the Jeremiah Wright thing, and I don't know Jeremiah Wright. Never heard him referred to as Jerry. Um, you know, there he, we don't have to he's revisit a, he's that a, entire. He's a lovely person. Okay, he may be lovely, but I remember the goddamn America, the chickens have come home to roost on 9-11. Not lovely, not at all. And the reason people thought he was anti-Semitic was he said the reason that President Obama had not spoken with him in a long time was, quote, this is from him directly, them Jews ain't going to let him talk to me. I told my baby daughter that he'd talk to me in five years when he's a lame duck or in eight years when he's out of office. They will not let him talk to somebody who calls a spade what it is. I said that from the beginning. He's a politician. I'm a pastor. He's got to do what politicians do. So them Jews ain't going to let him talk to me. Sounds about as anti-Semitic as somebody would ever openly get in modern-day America. Granted on that one quote, Jeremiah was very hurt and angry about how Barack treated him once Barack began running for president. Um, they had been very close. Barack and Michelle were married by Jerry at Trinity United Church. Um, and uh, I don't normally say things like this, but um, if, if Barack ever had a quasi-father figure in his life, it was Jeremiah. Um, and Jeremiah's work at that church uh, for decades uh, was just superb. Um, that congregation uh, had a, a, a huge positive presence on the far south side of Chicago. Um, so that's why, on balance, I very strongly uh, defend uh, Jeremiah. Um, uh, he understood my background uh, in, in King World with movement people um, and introduced me to, to members of his congregation so that they could speak to me about Barack and Michelle. Um, and it, it bears saying that um, once uh, Barack and Michelle were married and Barack began in Illinois politics, uh, they weren't doing much of anything at Trinity Church. They were not active uh, weekly members of the congregation. Uh, Jeremiah's impact on Barack back 86, 87, 88 was very important. Um, but um, I think it's fair to say that, that Reverend Wright uh, was 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 hurt uh, by how Barack uh, increasingly distanced himself uh, as his political mm. ascent uh, went up and up. Right, right, as he became a potential political liability. But you write in, in the book about how he doesn't really have, he doesn't hold on to people. Like he doesn't have the long-term relationships that you would typically see. You compare him to Jack Kennedy, uh, who was very different. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, this is what I said to David Samuels in the interview. I mean, no, no matter what we say about President Kennedy and some of his behavior uh, in the White House with young women uh, is <laughs> less know, than ideal. Atrociously. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, Jack Kennedy was intensely loyal uh, to people who'd been with him going back to the high school. Um, one of his closest friends, Lem Billings, was an openly gay man in the 1950s, in the 1960s, uh, living in part at the White House in the early 60s. Um, uh, Dave Powers, Kenny O'Donnell. Um, I have very mixed feelings about President Kennedy, but his loyalty to people close to him uh, was, was uh, sky high. Um, Barack Obama, on the other hand, um, he remained quite close to several of his high school buddies uh, from Hawaii, like Mike Ramos. Um, but the people with whom he remained close were, were not people who uh, ended up going to Harvard Law School um, and becoming, uh, you know, almost public figures, uh, you know, because of, of Barack's uh, achievement as as the first African American president of of the Harvard Law Review in in 1990 1991, uh, when multiple major uh, papers and magazines uh, wrote profiles of him way back then, um, and in particular in Illinois, um, the people who were just essential uh, to Barack's uh, ascent in Illinois politics, uh, Dan Showman, 
uh, Carol Harwell. Um, one would expect more long-term loyalty uh, from the av average human being. Look, you did the tough thing during COVID. You paid your people and pulled your business through the pandemic. And now doing the tough thing could qualify you for up to $26,000 per employee at covidtaxrelief.org. Government funds are available to reward companies with two or more employees who stayed open during COVID. This is not a loan and you don't have to pay it back. The program's complicated, but no one knows more about it than the CPAs and tax pros at covidtaxrelief.org. You pay nothing up front. They do all the work and share a percentage of the cash they get you. Businesses of all types, including nonprofits and churches, can qualify, even those who took PPP loans and even if you had increases in sales. You did the tough thing for your employees during COVID. Now let covidtaxrelief.org help get you up to $26,000 per employee. Visit covidtaxrelief.org. That's covidtaxrelief.org, covidtaxrelief.org. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.